morning, fellows. Today we're going to be looking at something I actually just finished up at work, and this is MAS, Metal as a Service. So it's a system developed by Canonical, which is the same people that uh, brought us Ubuntu, and um, it's actually pretty neat. It's a little annoying to get started because their documentation is so-so. It's uh, not the best. It kind of just walks you through best case scenario and doesn't really tell you how to fix any of the problems that you might run into. Um, so in this first video of what's probably going to be a three-part series is going to be talking about exactly what is Maz and what is Snap because they kind of it's not that they go hand in hand, but in order to install Maz uh, with the newest and latest version, it's usually easiest now to do it through Snap. So we'll start off with Snap because that's the first step. Um, and that's just basically a uh, packaging, a system packaging um, software system that Canonical also developed. Um, and it just makes it extremely easy to install um, bigger applications that may require a ton of dependencies and whatnot. So instead of doing something like an apt install MAS the way it used to be, and then struggling to find certain dependencies or making sure that you have everything installed, now it's as simple as running a command snap install maz um, and we'll go through the step-by-step -step process in the next video but for now we're just talking about what it is exactly um, so snap is relatively easy to to kind of grasp it's not exactly a docker container but it pulls down a whole bunch of uh, information for the dependencies and the different applications needed in order to actually run maz um, then what is maz so we're all familiar with the idea of virtual machines and managing virtual machines through hypervisors like Hyper-V and uh, VirtualBox and bigger ones like ESXi for, for bigger deployments and vCenter if you have multiple v uh, ESXi's. Um, well, MAS is basically, it gives you a single pane of glass for metal, uh, bare metal deployments. So let's just say that you want the performance of a bare metal box and you don't want to add any layers to it and this is a similar um, concept to why we switched to Maz um, and that's basically just that with ESXi there's another layer another th another area where things could get tangled in the network or in um, in your in your memory and in your processors and stuff like that because vCenter also can have its bugs it's pretty solid but it can sometimes drop things through and whatnot so sometimes you want your operating system living directly on the bare metal directly accessing all of its physical hardware for its uh, resources and stuff like that so what Maz allows you to do and this is their website i can put that in the description but it just allows you to automate the different steps, right? So the first thing would be that you'd need stuff on a Pixie booted network so that you can have access to that machine in mass. Then it goes through a step called commissioning where it kind of gets all of the information about the node, what kind of processor, memory, storage, and it'll go through and capture all the RAID information and stuff like that then you can manually go ahead and create different network layers or different interfaces that you want to be attached to that machine. And then you can go ahead and deploy it. Deploying it just means putting your operating system that you choose. You could have custom images. You could go with base images and then configure everything through the next step, Juju and Ansible. We're not going to get into that at the moment. Um, and then you can do pretty much anything else you want, especially using the Maz CLI, which is um, a command line interface for everything you would do in the GUI for Maz. So it just becomes even quicker because then you can write it all in a script. And then now one thing to kind of understand is how Maz is created, right? They have three different sections and you have to have all three of them in order for it to work properly at least you have a region controller then you have a rack controller and then you have a database controller right so um, region controllers just kind of hold all of the logical units for the region so the different um, uh, zones and availability zones and, and subnets and stuff like that the rack controller is what communicates with the specific machines when you tell it to boot um, and then the region also is uh, it acts as the API um, 
the API server, right? So whenever anything uses the API, it'll go through the rack and back to the region, get everything it needs and goes back down. So um, it is pretty solid after you get it going and understand the different changes they make. The issue is um, a lot of times Maz goes through some changes and their documentation isn't all that great. So um, within the next couple of videos, we'll, we'll go ahead and start deploying it, see what it looks like on the GUI. Um, and then I'll try to have, you know, at least one or two machines that we can play with uh, online to just look at it. Um, and then, I mean, you, you could see probably that this does hardware testering, testing. Um, you could do IP address management through um, through Maz, and you actually to get it to work properly, you do need a single network that has DHCP um, and is Maz controlled 100%. So then it does DNS. You can have network monitoring, um, and yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's a pretty solid experience when you figure out the little kinks in it. But um, it's not that it's not that bad. Um, and, you know, in the next couple of videos, we'll go through the process step by step and uh, we'll take a look at it. So we'll start off by installing. Um, we're only going to use the single virtual machine for this deployment um, because you could have you could have multiple region controllers and multiple rack controllers and multiple database controllers. But we're just going to go through it very simply and have one controller that will have the region and the rack and the database. It's not best case for like bigger deployments, but this is a home lab. So we're just going to mess around with it like that. Um, and then this will kind of give you the ability to, to provision. It's really meant for data centers. So whether or not you'd run this in a home lab is kind of up to you, depending on how big your home lab is. Um, but it is uh, a good thing to know about, I'd say, because it, it, it might come up if you're a system engineer like me or you're trying to get into DevOps. Um, it might just randomly come up and be like, hey, do you know Maz or are you familiar with that idea of bare metal? Just because after certain large deployments from vCenter and ESXi, you might want to move away straight towards bare metal. So if you guys have any questions or you want me to cover something in specific about Maz, um, just let me know and um, we'll go from there. Just don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for new content every other day. Thank you.